thesmartlocal.com. I eat that. Okay. I'm Xenia, welcome back to another episode of Hired or Fired. In this episode, I'm going to be a chocolate maker for a day. Mwah! I don't think a chocolate maker is a common occupation in Singapore, but I know it's quite well sought after in other countries because I remember when I was traveling in Europe, there were so many Atas chocolate stores that made chocolate look like a piece of art. Honestly, I feel it's a little bit pretentious to get artisanal chocolate because so small and so expensive. Wow, but I tell you, when I tried it for the first time, woo, I didn't know chocolate could taste this good and confusing because they have very creative flavours like basil chocolate and chili chocolate. I don't know what to expect. I just hope that I can taste some chocolate before I start work because it smells so good. <laughs> My name is Ronald. I'm actually a chocolate maker. Well, in the industry, I would say it's almost about 30 years. Really after my national service, I got a job in Johor Bahru. And that's where I got all my basic skills. I got the opportunity to be trained in Germany got qualified to become a confectioner or even a chocolatier. It is always like a luxury thing, you know, when we have a piece of chocolate on our hands. Having the passion in the things that you love, that actually gave me the motivations every day. A lot of people ask me this question. Well, you have been in this chocolate industry for almost more than 30 years, and why are you so thin? Because I savor my chocolate. I enjoy a bar of chocolates like how I drink my wine. I'm still keeping my fitness there. Hello, I'm Xenia. Hi, Xenia. I'm Ronald. I'm the co-founder of Le Merle Chocolate. Today, yeah. we'll be making some bean salting. Uh, process these uh, raw beans. And of course, there are more exciting processes like tempering the chocolate, molding the chocolate, painting the chocolate. Let's begin. Chocolate is a very messy job, alright? So somehow or other, you need to protect yourself. Look down here, wear white pants. Okay, okay, come. Let's get changed. <laughs> Right, the first task is very important. We are dealing with some raw beans. All right, these beans actually comes all the way from the farm. Okay, we're gonna pour them over the sieve. We suddenly have a dead animal. <laughs> you know, these beans, like I said, uh, they are not clean. Huh? There are some materials or foreign matters which are not beans that actually comes along with the bag of beans. Basically, what you do is you gotta spread the beans out. Okay, uh, spread the beans out so that the smaller items will just drop down. It's like mahjong. Okay. okay, push some of the beans out and then start sorting in a small portion. Got uh, it? Yes. Small portion. Then you spread it out, then you just pick up the bad ones. Different beans from different regions will have, this one I think I got right, different acidity. Yes, uh, acidity is part of the, the, the attributes of these uh, beans. Mm. Uh, I would say essentially it's the, um, the flavour notes. Usually how long does this process take? Okay, for one bag of beans, uh, like a 60 kilo bag of beans, to sort them or it takes maybe about two to two and a half days. <coughs> wow. But it also depends on the origins of the, some of the quality of the beans. This particular uh, batch of beans, the quality is not as good. You're going to spend a little more time. Hence, you want to challenge me or so. Like, how oh, you pick this uh... bag? You've got other bags you don't want to let me try. But it's okay, I'll take on the challenge. Once they are roasted, yeah. I can actually crack the beans and oh. remove the shells very easily. So crispy. So, mm. I want you to try cracking one of these beans, alright? Okay. Use my left hand, uh, huh? Oh. Very easily. Cut that one out, huh? Nope. Bang. Ah, okay, so I crack now, okay. Why? Try, try, try one more. Bang. Ah, okay, okay crack now, try, is try. it? Oh, okay. Ah! <gasps> Never mind. I broke the hole. <laughs> Sorry. You guess how many nips have you eaten so far? Just one. 
Why you always lying? And now back to your regularly scheduled program. What we're going to do is we're going to pour all these nibs into the hopper here, all right, and then uh, we will turn on the machine, all right, to okay. let it grind. Yeah, just pour everything in. Oh my god! Really? Eh? This is so cool. Because <laughs> when when I tried the nibs, it was so dry. Okay, okay, this one will go into the main grinder, which we call it the melonger. Melonger. Okay, so this is the main grinder. Eventually, grind and kneel this um, cocoa paste mm. into a very, very smooth liquid paste. Okay, so we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on. Okay. Oh. All right. So this equipment will start to turn. Can you see how yeah. liquid they are? Yeah. So, so I put, this I put is the inside. remaining of the paste that we need to put in. So what okay. we're gonna do is we, we just put it above here. Okay. And then we're gonna scrape this into the. Uh, okay. Yeah. Slowly, uh, not so 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 much at one go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, some more, some more. Yeah. Usually, within about six hours, you should get this kind of consistency already. Right. And then from there, we can start to put in the sugar. You know what I feel like doing now? Trying it. No. Take one satay stick. Put three strawberry. Maybe one marshmallow. <laughs> this nibs inside has been grinding for more than six hours already. Mm. What you'll see is, you know, the consistency of this uh, wow. the paste is, is very liquid. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to put in the sugar. This one you taste also? Um, well, you be one, you guess, so you can taste. Alright. A lot of people like to use this kind of sugar in their coffee. Alright, it adds flavor. Professional. How long does it take? Another six hours? Twelve? No. Up or down? Up. Up? Thirty-six hours? No. Up. Seventy-two hours? It's fifty-two hours. Oh my god! We just leave this um, running, you know, right. to an update. <laughs> Well, before we temper the chocolate, we have to ensure that this chocolate has a temperature of at least about 45 degrees Celsius. Okay? Okay. Are you confident to yeah, try this Yeah, of course. Let's go! More. More. Okay. Sorry, I need more space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Eh? Ah, okay, okay. Collect. Uh, this is the tricky part. Wow. Meanwhile. Wow, I'm so sorry. Ah, there we go. Okay, I think the chocolate is ready and it's time to reveal the truth! As you can see, it looks perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, it's just that whether they are properly tempered or not, important sign is whether it releases from the mold. Okay, as you can see, uh, it all turns grey. Yeah. Which means mm. that the tempering is perfectly fine. Mm. This one here, uh, it didn't release from the mold. So what oh. I usually do is, you know, uh, I will just... Eh? See, it releases from the mold. This chocolate tends to get softened very easily. All right, so no matter how you knock, it will never come out. This is the reason. Come on, man. Yeah, you can do all day. You know, it will still not come out. Let's let's put this in the freezer. All right, let's put it in the freezer <laughs> to check uh, whether this piece of chocolate is is nice by. Snapping it. <gasps> this means that the chocolate is crystallized correctly. 
Will mine wow. have a snap? I don't think so. Double kill. <laughs> so it will just like. <laughs> yeah, it may it may just. You know. Wow, really? Eh? There's no snap at all. Eh? Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't really need to temper the chocolate anymore because I've already tempered the chocolate for you. We dip some of these, okay? Mm. And then we start. Okay, okay. we're gonna put it inside the, the fridge. Nice. The next thing that we need to do now, put in the next colour. Put it back into the fridge for a little while. Mm. Then we will start pouring the chocolate. Chocolate. All right. So we have some pistachio ganache here. We have already made the shells with mm. the design. I'm gonna pipe one here. Okay. Until oh. the rim here. Oh. Okay. Oh. We're gonna stop and lift up the piping bag a little to see whether it has filled up or not. He's so ugly, oh. Mm. Triple kill! His answer was, mm. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fun. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this one out, which we have made. So it has already released from the mold. You can actually flip the mold and take the chocolate out. Mm. Alright, ready? One, two, three. <gasps> wow. This is how the chocolate should look like. So the one that I did will take a few hours, mm -hmm. long hours in fact. So I hope it turns out okay. You can uh, send me a photo tomorrow lah. And sure, tell me. sure. Yeah. I will. What do you think overall how you fare? I was very confident lah until my chocolate bar. <laughs> because I feel like I, I really, really follow the instructions yeah, and I did exactly what you said. The lucky thing is that you know you can always rework. Mm. Alright, remelt the chocolate and then do another round of tempering again. Right. All right. Today's episode is very refreshing. I thought it would be like the Baker's episode where it's a lot more hectic and more hands-on but surprisingly, I had a lot more time to understand the theoretical and scientific part of chocolate making. As much as I was struggling to understand because it got quite intense, one thing that surprised me today is that I think Ronald teach me more than just chocolate making. I also admire how selfless and nurturing he is in teaching others how to be a bean-to-bar chocolate maker. I think it's very rare for someone to do that. And he just feels like that cool uncle with nuggets of wisdom that I will go to for advice when I stress about life. So I guess today, regardless whether I'm higher or fired, I'm ending this episode with a very happy stomach and a lot more inspired about life. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm done for the day. How do you think I did today? Okay, I would say overall, if you grade like 10 points, you'll get 6. Okay, what well, pass? Yes, you may have failed in the tempering. It's totally fine because I always say you need to practice. I said, yeah, you fare pretty good, All right, pretty good. <laughs> so every single episode of Hire or Fire, I would ask my mentor a very important question. Will you hire or fire me? Well, like I said, you know, if you are happy in your job, I'm sure you will improve along the way. I guess that you would hire me because I think you are one of the few mentors who was very encouraging from the start. And I think maybe this was off cam that I remember when, um, you know, I didn't temper my chocolate well. And then you said it's important to make mistakes because then you will learn. That is something that um, I believe in as well. Okay, come pass me. I'm gonna there remove go. the husk for you lah, huh? Okay, let's start work. Thank you for watching this episode of Higher or Fired. If you like this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, ring our notification bell and watch our other videos over there. And don't forget to support Lemuel at Star Vista. Bye! Ayah, too far. <laughs>